Uh, I want to start something new tonight, even though we won't be able to get into it next Wednesday night. But I want to start something. You know, I usually, on Wednesdays, I usually go by subject. And this is still a subject, but it's not like a subject like we're going to teach on, you know, faith or, or how to be the prophet of your own life and, you know, different things like that. But I just, the, the word that kept coming to me was this. The day that we're living in, this is the word. Same God, just another day. Just a different day. Same God, just a different day. You ask people, how are you doing? Uh, just, uh, just the same old routine, just a different day. How are things going? Just the same problems, just a different day. Just the same routine, just a different day. And so I got to thinking about that, and I thought, how are you, God? I'm just the same God. It's just another day. You just got to let God be the same God, no matter what kind. If it's sun shining, if it's dark, whatever, he's still the same God, even though it's just a different day. Just because the day seems dark, it doesn't mean God's changed. There's too many things in the Bible that prove that God does not change. There's too many things that proves that God is faithful. There's too many things that proves that God won't lie. There's only one father of lies in the Bible, and it's not God. He said, you of your father, the devil, the father of lies. And uh, so we don't have that ruler over us. And if you... If that ruler of lying tries to influence your life, get it fixed in a hurry. Because God's a God of truth. Amen? So get that fixed. So uh, I've even added some verses, you know, since I printed off the notes. So uh, let's go uh, go to the book. I'm going to mix it up. Uh, Go to the book of Malachi chapter 3. Yeah! Oh, man, that was in course. The book of Malachi chapter 3. What's Malachi chapter 3 known for? The tithes. Well, that is part of, you know, people look at it, chapter 3, verse 10, bring all the tithe into the storehouse. We'll, we, we may get to that verse, but starting in verse 6 is one I really want to start with. And it says, uh, Malachi 3, 6, for I am the Lord, I do not change. I change not. I am the Lord, I do not change. Right now, you need to establish that in your heart, that he is God And he never changes. Now, let me tell you about God. He is progressive. God doesn't change, but God will continue to do something new. Something new, but nothing contrary. I've had, there's been some foolishness in the body of Christ over the years. And say, you know, we say, that's not even the nature of God. You're, you're, you're doing things and saying things is not even after the nature of God. Well, God's, God's always doing something new. This is new. But the Bible doesn't. Folks, if it's not in the book... It's not right. Amen? It's not right. It's not right. And, um, but he said, I am the Lord, verse 6, I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob, yet from the days of your father, you have gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, in what way should we return? Will a man rob God? Now, see, this whole thing that you get into tithing, I like how it starts. I'm not going to change. So here's the thing. If you want what God has, then you got to get it God's way. I said that up talking about healing. If you, want, if you want to be used by God, why don't we do what the Bible says and we'll get the Bible results. We'll get the Bible result. So the verse that I want to look at is, I am the God I change not. So when he goes to the tithing and he says, do this, bring your tithe, don't rob, don't steal, and see if I won't open the windows of heaven. Now see, right before that, I know it's true because he says, I'm a God that I change not. So it doesn't stop in the book of Malachi. It goes all the way over to the new covenant, and that's where we're standing today. Amen. Thank God for the left side of the book, but I'm living on the right side. Amen. I'm living on the right side. I'm living in the righteousness and the things that God has provided now through Jesus Christ. So he is a God that he, and he changes not. Now, so if God doesn't change, then we know his word never changes. And if his word never changes, then we know the things he's provided will never cease. So therefore, it puts me in a total state of peace. That my God, over my life, because I've given my life to him, is going to make sure things stay right in my life. Now, 
I, I've heard this statement more since COVID than I have any other time in my life, and that is God's in control. Yes, God is in control. Uh, but God's in control of his system, his kingdom. He's in control what you give him. If God was full of control, then there'd be no one ever go to heaven. No, I mean, no one ever go to hell because he wouldn't allow you to go to hell. If he was in control of your decision making all the time, you would ne- no one would ever go to hell because he said, I'm not willing that any should perish. But how many know people will leave this life as many have before and find herself in hell? So if God was in control of all of our control of everything, then he'd stay in control of your emotions and none of you would ever talk about me. Oh, not me, not me, about another somebody else. If God was in control, if God was in control of your tongue, then you'd never backbite. Thank God for the three, it's truths. <laughs> if God was in control of your life, then you would do a lot of things different. But you know what's disturbing about this? The helper, the restrainer, the strengthener dwells in every one of us that are born again which gives us the ability for God to stay in control of our life but you got to yield it to him that's why it says yield your members unto God yield your members unto righteousness and not unto sin you have to be able to yield something to God amen amen Amen. if God was in control there would never be another abortion center I think on the face of the earth if he was in control of that, because he wouldn't lie. How many knows man has their will? Man has their will. Man has their will. But let me tell you, I can say all day long, and something in my life, I'm not worrying about today or tomorrow because God is in control. How do you say that, Pastor? Because I have yielded myself to his control. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I've yielded myself to his control. But I know some people won't yield their self-control because they just want to live in the flesh. I've had people tell me, literally, I know it's hard to believe when I said, but the Bible says, I don't care what the Bible says. Yeah, can you imagine people that stupid? That's not stupid. You know what it is? Flesh. Flesh. You can cast out demons all over the world, but you can't cast out flesh. You can't cast out flesh. You can't do it. You can't do it. People fall for three areas. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And you have to control that by the word of God. It says cast down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. You have to do that. Amen. You know how I know Covenant Peace Church is going to fulfill its mission? Because we've allowed God... To have control. You understand? Hallelujah. So I thank God I can say in one aspect, my God is going to be in control of this. It doesn't matter how many people come against us. God is going to see us through. Why? Because we yield to him. Because we yield to him. Because we yield to him. I know God, he is a God of love. He doesn't kill, he doesn't steal, and he doesn't destroy. When I see all the killing, stealing, destroying, I know that's not God's plan. That's the agenda of the wicked one. The wicked one. Amen? The wicked one. You know, some people said that is wicked thinking. That person is wicked. You know what what the word wicked means? Twisted. Twisted. It comes from the same thing you have on your patio chair, wicker furniture. The word wicker is something twisted, that twisted material, wicked, wicker. And when the Bible said the enemy is the wicked one, he's the twisted one. And he will try to twist people's emotions because that's his nature. He will try to twist people's love walk because that's his nature. He'll try to twist and pervert people's love life because that's his nature. So anything is twisted. It's not God. There was, a, there was some music thing out a long time ago called Twisted Sisters. I'm thinking, that can't be. You know right away. Now, I've seen some Twisted Sisters, but I know right away that's not right. Can I get an amen? 
Wasn't there something like that? Oh, yeah. So you know right away that's not right because God's not twisted. The enemy's twisted. God is a God of light. And we'll find out there's no shadow of turning. That means he's not going to change. I thank God I serve a God that doesn't change, that I don't have to worry about him getting mad and uh, cursing me. When I've been in some of these countries, these Asian countries, Cambodia and Thailand and other places that I've been, and you watch them not even have enough money to put, on, to put food on their table, but they take what monies they can to buy these things and put in front of a dead God image so, they, so that God won't curse them. Come on, we serve a God that brings fulfillment to our life of happiness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on. So he's not going to change. He's not going to change. He's not going to change. That's like I mentioned a few weeks ago. I know I'm, I'm on my subject, but I'm, I'm on my subject. I promise you. A few weeks ago, you know, these things keep coming up in me. And, um, and so I promise you, I don't preach every emotion I get. Because there's so many things that you hear and you, you deal with. But the thing I mentioned a couple weeks ago, and that is that don't worry, all things work together for good. And I hear people telling that to people that live in the flesh. It'd be like Don, controlled by flesh, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. Never controls his mouth, always runs off, always talking, backbiting, strifing. And then people knows Don as a Christian man, you know, uh, comes to church, raises his hand a couple times, hallelujah, and and Don goes through something and somebody says, don't worry, Don, all things work together for good. And we say that out of it, but how do you know it's going to work together good for him? Well, that's because he's a Christian. That don't mean it's going to work together for good. Romans 8 says specifically, because we take that one verse out, all things work together for good to those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. Well, he qualifies. No, it's talking about those who, when you're in a situation and you don't know how to pray about it, it says the Spirit of God in you will begin to pray the prayer according to the will of God. When the Holy Spirit prays, he doesn't pray according to your will. He doesn't pray according to my will. He only prays the perfect will of God. That's why we have to allow him to pray. Once we allow the the Holy Spirit to pray the perfect will of God, then we know that all things work together for good. Why? Because we've already prayed out the perfect will of God. So sometimes we make phrases that sound real spiritual, but has no power. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, and you pray and let the Holy Spirit pray. Your flesh is saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel like running. I'm not running in the Holy Spirit. I just feel like escaping. I can't take the pressure. This People are coming against me one way. But now you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You need the wisdom of God. Now as you pray, you don't know how to pray. You don't know how to deal with this. The Spirit of God will pray through you the answer. Because he's praying the perfect will of God. I don't always pray the perfect will of God out of my head. First times I thought, man, this is the will of God and found out it wasn't the will of God. It just brought a good warm fuzzy. But it wasn't always the will of God. Amen. So I know if I, if I yield to the one on the inside and pray in the spirit when I'm going through something, I come out of there with boldness. Even though nothing changes the natural, I come out of there with confidence knowing that all things work together for good because I love God. And I'm called according to his purpose. And I'm allowing his purpose to manifest because I've allowed him to have the last word in the situation. Amen. So people that live in the flesh, live in sin, I, 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 I don't go say that all things work together for good because I don't know. Because they have to be willing to yield their self for that to work together for good. Amen. Glory to God. Oh, I could take this somewhere. Uh-uh-uh. Because I'm telling you, uh, God's, taken a, God's taken a bad rap in a lot of areas. People's got to blaming God, accusing God for not showing up when God wanted to show up. It's just people left no room for him. 
Now, by his sovereignty, because I got questioned before about the sovereignty of God. Yes, he is sovereign. He can. But by his mercy and sovereignty, he has the right to supersede anything that goes on. But let me tell you, God said, I've bound myself to my word. He's bound himself to his word. I wish more people would be bound to their word. God said, I've bound myself to his word. Say, same God. Just a different day. I don't like the day we're living in. Some of it. But he's still the same God. Amen. He's still the same God. All right. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah a minute. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Let's try, let's try on 50, 55 here. Isaiah 55. Are you still with me? Yes. Have I ticked you off yet? Yes. All right. All right. I heard a man say one time, my greatest gift that I've ever had was to tick people off. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a Christian with that gift. But I do want to be honest. Amen. Here we go. Let's just jump back up. Man, there's so many places in chapter 55. You ought, you ought to start in verse 1 of chapter 55. You should start chapter 1 of Isaiah. But chapter, let's just go verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Glory to God. That tells me it doesn't matter where I'm at. That this is almost like an Old Testament scripture that if you repent, he's faithful and just. If you, get back, if you get, turn yourself back to God, he'll pardon. Aren't you glad you've been pardoned? After every president goes out of office, they're always wondering, who's he going to pardon? There's a lot of people he could pardon. Is he going to pardon this person? When Trump left, was going out, they're wondering, who's he going to pardon? And then when presidents for that, who's he going to pardon? And there's always people saying, well, he pardoned that guy because of political reasons, but he should have pardoned this guy. Everybody has a comment on who he should have pardoned. Do you know what I love about it? Everyone has the same pardon. All you got to do is turn to him. Isn't that good? Turn to him. He's not, he's not showing favorites. He's not showing favorites. He's not showing favorites. Let the wicked forsake his ways. So wonder what level of wickedness he's talking about. The wicked. Let the wicked, let the wicked forsake his ways. And the unrighteous man's his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord. And he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. I like that. Glory to God. For my thoughts. That's where people get, I don't know why he would do that for that one. I don't know why God blesses that one. Maybe because God just wants to. I remember years ago, this story comes to me. You know I'm not going to get out of a story. I was just a uh, young man living in Oxford before we moved back to Michigan the last time and living in that house in Oxford, that the house with no facilities. You have heard me talk about. And uh, upstairs, if you go through, you come to the back door there, go through the kitchen, you turn right, you go into a little setting room, went up some steps, and at the top of the steps, there's another bedroom there. And you go into a hallway to the left there. When you cross over another room, I just still see it in my mind. There is a closet. This closet is like six by six or something, man. We use it as a storage. You had a lot of junk piled up there. You couldn't hardly get in there. It was built for a restroom, I think. It just never became one. Maybe that's where they kept the, kept the pot. I don't know. But, I mean, it would have been a great for a restroom. But it was just a closet. But there was this preacher coming to town. He was going to be at the, uh, at the city building in Oxford downtown up on the second floor. And uh, my dad was talking about it, how he knew things of the spirit and, and uh, God used him and things like that. And I was so hungry. I was so hungry. So I'm talking about 12-ish, 13-ish. 
And uh, I was so hungry, so hungry for God. And, and I remember going up there that day. No one told me to do this. I cleared out some space in that little closet area. And I said, I'm going to stay in here. I'm going to go with my dad tonight to that service. And I'm just going to pray. I wouldn't feel the Holy Ghost. I just, and I didn't, I didn't even, fa- I didn't eat that day. I said, I'm going to fast. No one told me to do that. And I was in that closet. I fasted. And I sat in there. I didn't know how to pray. But I was calling out to God. God, God, I just want to, I just want to see you tonight in operation. I didn't know what I was doing. And when I got to that service, this man started calling people out. Had a word of knowledge and different things like that. And I remember sitting towards the back. The second seat from, from the back. Never forget it. I it just comes to me now. I'll never forget it. Set seat from the back. The service is about over. And of all the people in there, a young boy, this guy comes up to me and says, young man, what you've been seeking and what you're seeing, don't worry, you'll see the same thing in your life. And I just begin to weep. Now, some people say, I wonder why he did that to that boy. Well, nobody knew that boy fasted that day and got in that little closet looking for God to do something, and we don't understand. Why would God Why would God speak to that person? You don't know what that person was doing to pull on God. God's thoughts and ways are higher than ours. That's the key. And when God does things supernaturally, I think about, I, think about, I don't know what that person did. Look, somebody just gave that missionary all that money. I wonder why that one. I don't know. Maybe, maybe six months ago, God dealt with that missionary to give everything he had away to another missionary that nobody knows. Right. And we wonder, ah, why would God do that? Look at all these missionaries. They gave it all to him. They didn't give it to anybody else. See, you got to understand that God is righteous. We don't always know what goes on behind the curtain. We just get to see what God does openly. What men do in secret. They can be rewarded openly. That's what's amazing about God. He doesn't play favorites. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. Let me say that again. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. He is. He doesn't show favoritism, but he does respond to faith. That's what he does. That's what he does. And you know, for years, I never... I never saw things. I remember praying and being in this church with the center aisle. And there was a lady that was standing in my, I saw this vision, a lady with a red dress. And I said, uh, dear one, step out into the aisle. I mean, I'm just young. And it's like the word of the Lord came to me for her. And it's like, that's how it's going to work, son. That's how it will work. And I hungered for that. I hungered for that. And I'm thinking, I I don't know. And then I find myself in a little old closet. It should have been a restroom. I'm still sore about that. (laughs) Hey, you go out there in that winter on that outside. You ever add a finger to an ice cube? Come on. You do the math. But I'm telling you, God is faithful. Amen. He's faithful. For his thoughts are not your thoughts. Aren't you glad? Nor his ways, your ways. Look at this. Look at it good. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor nor your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. Did we agree with that? How many of the heavens are higher than the earth? So are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. So that means that you'll never outguessing. You'll never outdoing. I those are the phrase. And it's because no matter if God tells you give, give everything away, God's got a way to get it back to you more. So there's a thing that says you cannot outgive God. But somebody would be crazy trying to try it. 
I talked to this one guy. He was so frustrated at God, blamed God for everything. And I mean, he was angry. And I said, you know, you just calm down. I'm just going to give him a piece of my mind. Talking about, he's telling me God, about God. Give God a piece of his mind. I said, uh, man, I don't know. I don't know how good you are, but I'm convinced your arms are too short to box with God. <laughs> I'm sure your arms are too short to box with God. So well, just calm down. Just calm down. So are, are we convinced his thoughts are higher than our thoughts? His ways are higher than our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so, so are his ways higher than ours. Are we, are we believing that? All right. So look at verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. Now, being in this season of the year, the rains are coming down and it won't be long. So will the snow. Now, I don't know people in the deep south or over in the Caribbean. They, I, don't, I don't know how they preach this. Because they don't know what snow is. Some Caribbean countries, they know what snow is, but not the kind that of falls from heaven. Uh, that concerned me. <laughs> that concerned me right there. <laughs> For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven... And does not and do not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So what does rain and snow do? It comes down, it waters the earth, it puts the earth in a state where the seed grows and it produces. That's what it does. So what it's saying is rain doesn't come down. And right before it contacts earth saying, nope, I don't want to water the earth. Snow, I wish snow would do a little bit more. Snow doesn't say, no, I don't want to build up on the ground. No, I'm just going to go back where I came from. It said, no, when rain and snow, when they come down, it comes down to do what? Water the earth to bring forth seed and to provide, right? Right? Has rain ever rejected, has rain, has, has it ever rained that it didn't make the ground wet? Has it ever snowed that it didn't make the ground wet? No, now I've seen it rain on one side of the street, not on the other. But wherever it rained, it was wet, wasn't it? It was wet. But listen to this. Let's read it again. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven... And do not return there, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. Uh oh, so, so his word's gonna be like what? The rain and the snow. Does the rain make the ground wet? Does the snow affect the ground? So does the rain go back to heaven before it accomplishes what it does? No. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. So that tells me that it doesn't matter what happens. God can't lie. God won't change. His word doesn't change. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. The word was with God and the word was God. So if God doesn't change, his word will never change. It will always produce what it's sent to do. Don't ever say, I don't see how the word's going to work. The word cannot help itself but work. It has to. It has to. It's like snow and rain. It's like snow and rain. I wish we could say just like rain, rain. But we'll be saying snow too. Just like snow and rain. Just like snow and rain. Just like snow and rain. There's a purpose. Just like snow and rain. Just like snow and rain. So shall my word be. Doesn't matter the pressure I go through. So shall your word be. So shall your word be. All oh, people say, man, back in the old days, we didn't face this. Same God, just a different day. So shall your word be. 
It doesn't matter how dark it is. Same God, just a different day. So shall your word be. It doesn't matter how corrupt. Same God, just a different day. So shall your word be. 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 You get to saying that, and you'll continue to say that. So shall your word be. I like this next part. For you shall go out with joy and be led with peace. We used to sing chorus with that song, Scripture. You shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Let me tell you, that sounds like pure victory to me right there. That sounds like victory to me. Folks, let me tell you, it does, I, it does matter to me what you go through because I love you. But the truth is, regardless of the their surmountable obstacles, God is still God. Amen. And I, I've said this, I, I, and I'll give the same answer. Well, why do Christians not receive? I don't know. Well, why did God heal that one and not heal this one? I, I don't know. I just believe Jesus, when he said it was finished, he healed all of us. I believe everyone, there's not a man born that don't have the same right to go to the same heaven we go to. Someone said, why does, how, how, how they say this to me one time? He says, why does, why does bad things happen to Christians? I said, why does, why does good people go to hell? It's because they don't always receive the things that's there. I believe God's made provision for us. And it tells us right on the book of Hebrews in the faith chapter that it says women received their dead raised again. All of these things that happened. He says, but others rejected it, not accepting the deliverance for a better resurrection. So that tells me it was available to them. They just didn't get it. Folks, let me tell you, God is a God that can't lie. He is true. I don't know why everybody doesn't get healed. I just know Jesus paid the price for all. It's like the day that this person and I were talking, and I, you know, I do a lot on submission authority and scriptures like that, so I always go to the book of James, chapter 4. It says, uh, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. How many knows that's Bible? Uh, does God change? Does his word change then? No. So I said, uh, just submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. You can't resist the devil and then submit to God. The order is submit to God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee. Now, that statement did not say, and it might be, if you submit yourself to God, and resist the devil, he might flee. It doesn't say that. It says, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. And you realize somebody want to argue? I mean, God's trying to help them. The devil's ransacking. I said, submit yourself to God, because you got to quit living after the flesh. you got to follow God. It's amazing how many people still want the hand of God to work in their life, but yet they want, to, they want to go ahead and keep dancing with the world. You can't do that. You can't straddle the fence. You're going to have to choose sides here. Which side are you going to be on? Even the Old Testament, he said, choose sides right here. You're for me or against me. And the ones who chose him were blessed. The ones who didn't, the earth opened up and they were swallowed. So let me tell you, it's better to choose God's side. If he gives you a chance, hurry up and get over there real quick. I know I'm speaking to the choir, but I know, how many's ever heard that phrase? But I've talked to a lot of preachers that had choirs with backslid people in them. So just because I'm preaching to the choir, I don't know everybody in the choir saved. So anyway, they want to argue. Just submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he flee. I, well, I did that. I said, uh, well, keep doing it. He'll flee. I did it and he didn't flee. 
So they started to want to argue about it. I said, but the Bible says that if you submit yourself to God and resist the devil, flee. I know what the Bible said, but it didn't work. And they wanted to argue their way into staying defeated. Instead of saying, you know, Brother Ken, uh, I'm going to continue to submit myself to God. I'm going to check everything in me. And, and I want to make sure that I have not left a door open. And I'm going to submit myself to God. And I'm going to continue to stand against the devil and know he's flee. But they didn't want to do that. They wanted to argue. They wanted to keep making excuses for their weaknesses. You can't help people like that. Until they decide, I want to obey the Bible. The Bible will work. I love Sister Gloria Copeland. This phrase that she made many moons ago. She said, it's not complicated. The sun will shine on anybody who gets out in it. It doesn't pick or choose. Amen? It doesn't pick or choose. We, you, we don't walk out in the sun and all of a sudden it shines on me and all of you are in darkness. No. The sun will shine on anybody who gets in it. Come on. You know why the beaches are full? Because they're all enjoying the same sun. So the sun will shine on anybody. So that tells me the sun, Jesus, he's going to shine on anybody who gets in him. If you get in him and you walk with him, you're going to get the same benefit. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of. He is. He is that. How's faith come? By hearing. How does fear come? By hearing. How does aggravation come? By rehearsing and hearing. The more you talk about your aggravation, the more aggravation comes. Because aggravation comes by hearing and speaking. Hearing and speaking. Faith comes by hearing and speaking. Hearing and speaking. Hearing and speaking. That's how it comes. Amen. That's how riots get. They, they, they talk and work themselves up until they grab clubs and start go chasing somebody. Because the more they talked about it and the more they thought about it, the more angry they got. Next thing you know, the riot's on. The same, it's a spiritual, it's a law just perverted. The more you talk about God and the more you meditate God, the more you talk about God, the more you meditate by God, you take the word of God as a sword and it's on. It's on. It's the same thing except one's holy and one's perverted. Same God. Just a different day. Thank God that he's not changing. Amen. I am the Lord thy God. I change not. Amen. So the word, the word will perform everything that has been sent to do. Can you handle one more verse? I may be able to get that in before quarter after. Go with me to the book of James chapter 1. Ooh, it's warm in here tonight. I don't, don't turn the air on. People's already, they'll start flipping out on us. So I'm just saying, making a statement, not requesting, just making a statement. But I, there's some people who agree with me right now. <laughs> Chapter one. Oh, where do we start here? All right. Let's just go to verse 12. Once again, we should start at verse 1. But verse 12, we'll, uh, we'll at least go here to an inner, to a thought, a, a, a full thought. Blessed, empowered, I like both of them. Blessed, empowered is the man or woman who endures temptation for when he has been approved... He will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. No, for God cannot tempt. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. You with me? 14. But each one is tempted... Or tested when he's drawn away by his own lust, his own desires, and he becomes enticed by them. And when these lust desires 
has conceived, it, it brings forth or bursts. The, word, the better word than brings forth, the better word is birth. And it gives birth. How many knows? It's conceived. If something conceived, you got to have what? Birth. So I like these two words going together. Uh, when desires has conceived, it births to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. For the wages of sin is, the Bible's clear on it. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother or sister, either one. Every good gift, oh, I know some people don't believe this. Every, what gift? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Now, folks, this will make you... As the old-time preachers say, this will make you shout the back of your choir robe out. (laughs) Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation, variable, or shadow of turning. There's none. That means there's no shadow of turning. He doesn't change. You know, God is so much light. You know, here... There's always shadows, but there's no shadow of turning with God. You know, talk about the enemy lurks in the what? Shadows. But with God, there's no shadow of turning. You realize right now, because of the light, I have a shadow. I have a shadow. I go over here, I have a shadow. The shadow's bigger than me. Anywhere, there's a shadow. Right here underneath these seats is a shadow. Used to, if I stood here... My face would be in a shadow. It doesn't do that anymore. Uh, but there'd be a sh- there's shadows right here. There's shadows. Underneath of, underneath of this pulpit, there's a shadow. Under, there's a shadow from here. It reflects here. But you realize God is so much light. When God shows up, there's no more shadows. God's light is so consuming, it's just as bright underneath as it is on top. There's no shadow in God. He is full light. He is full bright. You can't hide in the shadows here. He is so good. I want people to realize that God is so good. And I'm sure people can say, well, wait till you go through a tough time. I've had a few of them. I've had a few of them. I've been through some tough times. I may not have been through with some people's others. I may not have had to stand and sit in front of a doctor and say, I'm sorry you got cancer, we can't help you. I may not have been through some things. Everybody has gone through things. But I got a testimony today by somebody who had a certain cancer. I forget what, what it was. And now they're completely free. Oh, it, it was a pastor from my northern Ohio. He sent me a message stating that I'd love to come for your conference, but this is what's been going on. My wife had two different kind of cancers, but I'm telling you that she's completely cancer free. Praise be unto God. Yeah. Praise be unto God. There's people here with this testimony here. We can let them stand and tell you. But everyone has been faced with challenges. But God is still God. That's why we want to rally around people and encourage people. That's why it's so important to become a disciple, not one that lives always by their emotions. You can't live by your five senses. It won't work. You got to believe that what God's word said is true. It's what God's word said is true. People told me back in 93, 94, uh, 92, 93, I started going to Africa in 94, and uh, then, then all the way up until 97, you don't qualify for the ministry. You don't qualify for the ministry. And that stuff started sticking. That stuff started sticking. You start thinking, do you qualify? Do you qualify? And people start getting really mouthy about that. And then when I went to Mary Angel, you surely don't qualify. People left books on my door right down on Ockham Street. I had, you know, the cassette, the little small mini cassettes that goes in answer machine. Several messages one day. Can't believe you would, you would compromise the ministry to marry a woman. 
I'm telling you what. <laughs> What's the alternative? There is no other alternative. <laughs> But the point is, because of bad doctrine. That's our whole problem. But that stuff begins to wear on you. That stuff begins to wear on you. And I, I, I told Dad, during all of that stuff, thank you that you kept me close. And you kept giving me that opportunity to preach that gospel. People say, why do you love him so much? Because he didn't quit on me. He kept being a dad. He kept, he was there. But you got to know how to not quit. Everybody goes through something, but you got to go through it. You got to go through it. And when the devil tried to convince me that I had that brain tumor, every day, every day, I didn't even tell Angel, remember? Didn't even tell her. But every day I got into the scripture. It's how you got that bookmark. That's the scriptures I used every day, every day, every day, two or three times a day. Quote no scriptures, quote no scriptures, quote no scriptures. Well, not one month, not two months, not three months, not four months, not five months. But in a way into the sixth month before that one verse hit me that day. Out of all days, I read it two or three times a day for about six months. And my tongue, and my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. When I read that, I said, bless God, I write my victory once and for all. And I didn't realize everything was gone. Day went by and I'm thinking, the symptoms are gone. No, you stand. You stand. Everybody has it. I may not go through what you've been through. You may not have been through what I've been through. But we've all been through something. If not, we've been close to somebody who has. And we stand. We stand. Amen. I didn't like the idea of going and standing between, you know, in, in front of a nine-year-old and an eight-year-old and tell them one day. Because I was called out in the middle of the night and tell them that their daddy had died. I don't like that kind of stuff. But you know by the power of God, if you do it right in love, that God's going to redeem the situation and help families. Let me tell you, we've all been through something. But God will never change. And that's what we have to stay on. It's just a different day. But we still serve the same God. Amen? Amen? All right, let's stand together. Come on. Glory to God. There's no variable in the shadow of turning. He's a God of light. He's a God of light.